excited and we're expectant. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. I pray that we never as a house take that for granted that the Lord is here, right here. Whatever you need Him to do, He is available. Um, He's a good, good Father. And you're in the room today. There's, There's a reason that you're in the room today. And so today is no ordinary day. Uh, We have a special guest that I get to introduce, one of my favorite people on the planet, him and his wife and their daughter love them so, so, so much. But before he takes the stage, um, I do want to read our scripture of the year. So at Social Dallas, y'all know how we get down. At Social Dallas, we've been declaring a scripture, Hebrews 12, 28 and 29, every single Sunday. And y'all have it memorized. Do y'all wanna kick it off and show the first time guests how we get down? Do you see what we've got? An unshakable kingdom. And do you see how thankful we must be? Not only thankful, but brimming with worship, deeply reverent before God. For God is not an indifferent bystander. He is actively cleaning house, torching all that needs to burn. And He won't quit until it's all cleansed. God Himself. We got the scripture memorized in our souls. I know the devil's scared about that. So as I mentioned, we have a special guest, but really not a guest, he's family. He and his wife and his daughter, Goldie, they actually lead a church called City Light in Vegas. What, a church in Vegas that's thriving? Um, They're special people. When we went on our honeymoon, we actually had, um, we stopped by uh, and hung out with them because they're just that that special to us. They have a mobile church as well. They've been grinding for, I believe, six years now. And they've just been faithful. He leads with integrity, character, incredible husband, uh, pastor, leader, father. And honestly, to leave his church today to come be with us, there's just such an honor. So let's let's lean in and let's go ahead and just give it up for Pastor Jabin. Round of applause, y'all. He's in the building today. Pastor Jabin Chavez. We love you so much. Good morning. Come on, let's give Jesus our best praise. We've given Him all day. I know you've been saving it. No, come on, anybody love Him? Let's tell Him. Let's take the first part of the first day of the week and let's give it to God. Come on, let's give Him glory for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Father, we love you. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Let's lift up our hands. All over the room, Father, we lift our hands as a sign that we're open, that we're expectant, that we're ready. We lift our hands like a child running into their father's arms saying, we, we need you, you're, you're our source, you're where our help comes from. We wouldn't have made it this far without you. We cannot go into our future without you. Like Moses said, Lord, we, we tell you, where, where would we go without you? What would distinguish us if your presence doesn't go with us? If, if, if you don't go, we don't want to go. Huh. We sense your presence now. I thank you that your anointing falls on this room like a, like a warm blanket that covers every soul. Hallelujah. Thank you for healing people right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that pain leaves now off of shoulders and backs and knees. Thank you, Lord, that eyes are clearing up and allergies are clearing up and hearts are being strengthened and kidneys are being cleansed right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Woo! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. God's a giving and receiving God, and I, I believe we're gonna I believe we're gonna receive a lot today, but let's just give him glory for one moment. We give you glory. We give you glory. You are worthy of it all. Let's tell him just for a moment. 
You are worthy of it all For from you are all things And to you are all things You deserve the glory Let's lift up our hands and say You are worthy of it all Let it rise, you are worthy of it. I just feel like your soul is being renewed right now. For from you are all, and to you are all things. Yeah, you are worthy, worthy, worthy. You are worthy of it all. Hallelujah. You are worthy of it all Oh, for from you are all things To you are all things You deserve the glory Every voice, every voice You are worthy of it all You are worthy of it all all the praise, honor, glory. All of it belongs to you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Clap those hands one more time and give him praise because he's worthy. Hey. I'm going to let y'all be seated. Give one hug away. Only one hug on your way down. Just one hug. Don't be too friendly. Just one hug. I want to honor your pastors, Pastor Robert, Pastor Taylor Madhu. How many love your pastors? Make some noise. The most gifted, creative, brilliant people uh, who who love God, love you, and love this city. And uh, I count it a massive, massive honor uh, that I get to call you guys friends and that I get to watch this story unfold. Um, man, nobody nobody like Pastor Robert, by the way. Um, let me just set your expectation. I'm not like even close. So <laughs> like if you're waiting me to like kill it today, sorry, just be disappointed. Like this, Where's Robert? He's not here, okay? He's at elevation, all right? And so um, I'm here. He's, he's the greatest. He's such a gift, not only to you, not only to this city, but to the world. And I'm so grateful for that man of God. I'm grateful that I get to call him friend, but I'm just grateful for his yes, his surrender, his study, his passion. We get on the phone and we just, talk about Jesus and preach to each other and laugh. And, um, he's the best. And you're in the right house. Can I get an amen? You you got the right pastors. Can I get a better amen? And um, I, I, I thank God for them. And I thank God for this season that this church is in. Uh, you're in at the ground floor. You're in where every Sunday we don't know where the next location is or where we're going to meet or What we're going to do, I watch it every week on on Instagram, like, oh my God, they're in another location. Oh my God, they're in another. And yet you show up and I'm very grateful for you. I want want you to hear from me quickly that um, church is a team sport. 
And uh, God anoints a man and a woman with the vision, but he anoints a people to run with that vision. And there's an anointing on your life that we need in this house. There's a grace on you that we need. Uh, We need your prayers. We need your support. We need your giving. We need you serving. Because uh, when you get in a church this gifted, you can just come in and watch. Y'all know what I'm saying? Y'all ever seen like a really good singer and you can't even sing anymore? You just... Right? And that can kind of happen with Robert, right? You come in and he just starts doing what he does and he because it's like otherworldly, but, but we need you. And uh, uh, this is miracle territory. This is miracle ground. You're in a miracle season. You don't even know it. And um, I want to just encourage you, go all in on this house. If you've been th- wondering about tithing, maybe you've been tithing to your, to your last church in Alabama, stop. They got money in Alabama. We need it right here. If you... <sighs> been given 1% here and 2% there and 4%. I'm telling you, go all in in this house. Watch what God will do. And uh, and we need it. We need it to do all that God's called us to do. And so um, I love you. I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you for parking 10 miles away and walking to a bar. Amen. To be in church. <laughs> Give yourself a big hand. Come on, somebody. Turn in your Bibles, turn in your Bibles to Genesis 32. While you're turning there, I just want to, yes, send love from Vegas. We planted City Light Church six years ago, and uh, we're currently building a building, uh, and God is good, uh, and so, and y'all's building is just around the corner, I know it, and uh, it's going to be a blessing when it happens. I, I want to encourage you and remind you. The vision of Social Dallas is not get a building. Hello. All the building does is help us serve more people, love more people, reach more people, minister to more people, be a light to more people. Amen. And uh, same with City Light. We're building a $24 million facility right now. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know. I don't. Uh, But that's not the vision. That's just the tool. And uh, the... The building only helps us do more of this. Amen? Genesis 32. So if you're ever in Vegas, come say hi. A pastor is actually preaching our seven-year anniversary in February. So just come with him. He'll pay for all the flights. He'll pay for all the hotels at the Wynn uh, Hotel. He's going he's to put you in a suite. And uh, amen. But he's coming for our seven-year. We can't wait for that. And if you're ever in Vegas doing what you do in Vegas, um, what do you do in Vegas? What do you, street evangelism? What do you do? Witness, witness to, the, to the card dealers, amen? What do you, I don't know what you do in Vegas. But if you come, come say hi. And, uh, and we would love to have you in Jesus' name. Genesis 32, so Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him till daybreak. This is God fighting with Jacob. And maybe you feel like you're in a fight right now. Welcome to the fight club. When, when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched and he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go. I love this. God picks the fight. And then he's like, yo, man, I'm done. I'm done with this. Let me go. It's daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Let's say that line together. Come on. I will not let you go unless you bless me. One more time. I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Who are you? What you about? Jacob. He answered. And the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled, you've wrestled, you've fought with God and with humans. You've dealt with the God issue and the people issue. You've, you've dealt with the vertical issue and the horizontal issue. See, our life is like a cross. And there, there has to be health vertically and horizontally. It has to go both ways. And, and, and God says, you've, you've dealt with your, with your God issues and your man issues. 
with your mama issues and with your daddy issues and with your trauma issues and with your drama issues. You've, you've, you've faced it and you've overcome. See, you can overcome. You can overcome. You can overcome. Now, now Jacob replies, tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel. This means face to face. Because I saw God face to face, yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel. And he was limping because of his hip. Let me just take a couple of moments to preach uh, from, from the subject. How to surrender to God. How to surrender to God. Just elbow your neighbor and say, let's wrestle. Come on, tell them. Let's wrestle. Let's wrestle. Let's wrestle. Amen. Thank you, guys. Amen. So, so we find Jacob in Genesis 32, and, and he's on the run. He's, he's running from his brother Esau because he stole his birthright, and he's running from his father-in-law Laban because he's lied to him and cheated him. And now Jacob is being hunted by both the men. He's running from Esau, he's running from Laban, he's running from his decisions, he's running from his choices, he's running from God. If, if you want to figure out who Jacob is, uh, let me give you Jacob 101. I'll give you Jacob in one verse, Genesis 31, 31. I rushed away because I was afraid. Like if you want Jacob in a nutshell, that's it. That's the snapshot of Jacob. This is Jacob's entire life. Unsettled, discontent, rushing away. And we find Jacob at his lowest point. Literally, the scripture tells us this happened at the Jabbok River where the river would empty. So this is the bottom. I know y'all been talking about valleys. This is the bottom of the valley at the bottom of the river. Jacob is at his lowest point point and it's here at his lowest point that God finds him. Ooh, anybody grateful for this? That at your lowest point, at your darkest moment, in your deepest valley, there is God finding him. See, see, I told you that two men were chasing Jacob, but there was actually a third man chasing Jacob, and his name is Jesus. And, and I'll tell you that you can run, but you can't hide. You, you, you can keep rebelling, but his grace is going to keep chasing you down. That even when you're running from decisions and choices and consequences, there is the mercy of God chasing you down. This is what happens. See, some of y'all say, oh, I found Jesus. He wasn't lost. Uh, he found me. I was not looking for him. I was, I was blind in my sin. I was deaf in my sin. I was dead in my sin. But here came Jesus at my lowest point and he picked me up and he resurrected my life and he changed my name. This is who God is. God has a way of finding you and maybe you feel so far from God, but I want to tell you he's closer than he's ever been. You're in the right place at the right time and it may feel dark and it may feel low, but God is is with you in this moment. God finds Jacob at his lowest point, at his darkest hour. This is where God changes him. This is where God saves him. This is where God wrestles with him. This is where God gives him a new name. And I believe God can do that for you today. How do I surrender to God? How do I live a life of surrender to God? Well, firstly, Here's my first point. I am a pastor now, so I have points now. Amen. Uh, number one, you have to stop running. Yeah. Uh-huh. Jacob finally stops. See, he's always been running. He's been running after his father Isaac's approval. He's been constantly running after his mama's care. Jacob is the first mama's boy in the Bible. Jacob has been running from Esau and running from Laban. But he's finally stopped. See, I find that most people run from issue to issue. They run, they run from one unhealthy thing to another unhealthy thing. Never dealing 
with the man issue and with the God issue. So we go from guy to guy and we go from girl to girl because they were crazy. I'm not, they were. And we go from church to church because Robert's anointed, but my last pastor, will you just wait till Robert annoys you? Because he's anointed till he's annoying. He's holy till he's not. I got to get out of Dallas. I got to get to Houston. I got to get to LA. <laughs> and we run from thing to thing. My boss is terrible. I need a new job. Is this, I know I just started preaching and I'm like already up in your business, but... But we end up running from thing to thing, from person to person, job to job. Never wrestling with the God issue and the man issue. So we keep trying to change the inside, but God's trying to transform me here. And so, man, by the way, I love the crickets because we've been having crickets at our high school. Now y'all hear that? Is, that just makes me feel like, welcome to planting a church where there's crickets because the venue's too cheap to buy bug spray. Amen. Okay, so sorry. I just had to vent. Shout out to Sierra Vista High School in Vegas. We're doing the same thing. See, so we end up running from thing to thing. Here's what I've learned about life. This is gonna be real deep. Get ready. This is why I'm a theologian. Um, get ready. Wherever you go, there you are. Like change cities, you're still gonna be you. Get married, you're still gonna be you. You miserable single, you're gonna be miserable married. You miserable without kids, you're gonna be a miserable parent. You miserable with a little bit of money, you're gonna be miserable with a lot of money. Because wherever you go, there you are. Until you let God transform you. Until you wrestle with God for yourself. Until you get to the Panayo place where you see God face to face, you will just keep running. But I've come to tell you, you got to stop running. See, Jesus has something better. It's called repentance. Look what he says. Repent of your sin and turn to God. Look at this, Matthew 4. Repent of your sin and turn to God, which, which means that it's, it's one thing to turn from something, but you got to turn to the right one. A, a lot of times we turn from sin to ourself. We turn from sin to people. We turn from sin to what we're trying to do, better habits, but we never turn to God. But the power of repentance is not remorse. The power of repentance is the Holy Spirit. The only way that repentance can be sustained is if you turn to the right person. Because if I, if, I, if I say, man, I hate this about me, I'm gonna turn to me. Well, there's no power in me. So Jesus says it's not just to turn from sin, it's to turn to God. And once you turn to God, then something can happen. He says, change the way you think about sin. Change the way you think about me. The kingdom is right here, right now. I'm not far away. I'm not out there somewhere. I'm right here, right now. There's an awesome repentance scripture. Maybe you've never thought about it, but it's Ephesians 5.18. Don't get drunk with wine. It's gonna mess up your life. Paul says it leads to, to excess, meaning it's never enough. What, whatever you're into will never be enough. You'll never have enough approval. You'll never have enough money. You'll, you'll never have enough friends. You'll never, you'll never have enough zeros in your bank account. You'll never have enough cars. You'll never have enough homes. You'll never, you'll never, you'll never have enough watches. Once you get drunk on the wine of this world, it's never enough. So he says, don't get drunk on that. Don't get drunk on the culture. Instead, watch this. He said, be filled. Everybody say, be filled. He said, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So he's now contradicting the two. And here's what he's saying. 
everything that you're getting inebriated on in this earth is a cheap imitation of the real eternal thing that God has for you. You think that lust is satisfying? You should try real love. You think that hate and bitterness is satisfying? You should try forgiveness and mercy. You think that that greed is going to get you something? You should see the power of generosity. Whatever the devil is offering you is a cheap imitation, Eve, of the tree of life that can change your life, change your family, change your bloodline, change your future, change your outlook. Come on, am I preaching to anybody who knows that there's no thing like the real thing? Come on, give God praise real quick. I'll keep preaching, I promise. And it's here that Jacob meets God. How do I surrender to God? I gotta stop running, but number two, I have to admit that I have issues. Yeah, you and me too, right? We come into church, praise God, hallelujah, glory to God. Ooh, it's Sunday, let's go. <laughs> hallelujah, God's so good. He's so good, so good. How are you doing? Good, man, good. <laughs> Just good. It's a, it, you know, it's been a season, but good, you know. <laughs> How are the kids? You know, I mean, they're on a journey, you know, just... Until you admit. That's why you got it. That's why men, you got to be there Saturday. No, because you got to go up to somebody and be like, hey, you know when I told you I was good? I'm not. <laughs> Marriage is rough. Kids are biting me. They're biting me. They're attacking me. They're, I don't have enough money. I'm in debt. I'm in trouble. Hell. See, because God will never heal what you won't reveal. And God won't bless the perfect Sunday church you. He'll, he'll bless the real you. If you'll ever get to the point where you look at God and go, I'm, I'm Jacob. I'm, I'm Jacob. God says, who are you? See, names today don't mean a ton. We basically just name our kids what we're going to name our kids. But in Bible days, your name meant everything. Your name was a prophecy. And your name was usually, was usually given based on the season of the birth and the birth. So they would look at the surroundings of the birth and they would name you. And Rebecca names her little boy Jacob. Jacob was a twin. He was the second born twin. Esau came out first. And when Esau left the birth canal, there was one last foot leaving Rebecca's womb. And as his foot was leaving the womb, Jacob was holding on to the foot. And Rebecca spoke over Jacob. Ooh, this is, this is my troublemaker. This is, this is my little heel grabber. This is my little deceiver. This is my black sheep. This is going to be my problem, child. And she names him Jacob, which means all those things. And she now declares over Jacob's future based on one moment that he could not even control. You got to be so careful not to let Rebecca name you. Is this microphone on? Can I talk to anybody? You can't let your ex name you. You can't let your father name you. You can't let your mother in a moment of grief name you. You cannot let a politician name you. You cannot let a moment of frustration name you for the rest of your life. But now that's what Jacob lived with. And that's what Jacob became. He became this deceiver. He he became this manipulator. He became this schemer, this trickster. And God says, who are you? And one theologian said, Jacob had probably not used his name in at least 15 years. Oh, because it's so easy to cover up. God, I feel the anointing. Who, Who are you? I'm Abraham's grandson, you know. Praise God. I'm Isaac's boy. I'm, I'm one of Isaac's kids. I'm Esau's uh, brother, you know, I'm I'm Laban's son-in-law. See, he could have told the truth-ish. Yeah. 
But it's not until you look at God and go, there's a Jacob in me. And I've been acting like he ain't there, but he's there. And, I, and I've been trying to pray over it. And I've been trying to talk to you, God, like he isn't listening. And I've been, I've been trying to worship like I haven't been dealing with this thing in me. But God, I'm going to get real with you. I'm, I'm Jacob. And it's not until you get honest with God. By the way, um, it's, it's not like God asked that because he didn't know. Hello. God wasn't curious. He knows everything. God was trying to get Jacob to the place where he admitted his issues. I'm, I'm Jacob. I am who, who they told me I am. Are you living there right now? Because if you are, that can change today. But the first step to freedom is the admission that you need it. <laughs> in John chapter eight, there's a scripture that we love. We love it in church. We sing about it. Some of y'all got it saved on your, on your phone. Some of you got it on your fridge. You, I mean, you love this scripture. Jesus said, whom the son sets free is. Free. Yeah, we even know it. We even know it. Like it's the top 10. I mean, it might not be a Psalm 23. It might not be a John 3, 16, but it's up there. Like it's for sure a top 10. We, we write whole songs. We love that scripture. You know, when Jesus said that, people didn't shout. People didn't praise God. People didn't go, wow, that's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus looks at a group of believers. You can read it later. A group of believers. And he says, if you want to be one of my disciples, you can be one of my disciples. I could set you free. Whom the son sets free is free indeed. And the, the believers did not shout, wow, praise God, I'd love that. The believers respond, John 8, 33. Uh, do, do you not know who we are? We're Abraham's seed. We've never, we've never been slaves to anyone. How, how dare you tell me I need to be free? I'm, I'm, I'm the seed of Abraham. And it, it can be so easy to come into church and sugarcoat our reality. Huh. Never been slaves to anyone. Yo, did they not watch the Prince of Egypt? Egypt, uh, Assyria, Babylon, yo, Rome, like they were currently under Roman occupation. They could not blink without Caesar's approval. We've never been slaves to anyone. Is this okay, Caesar? They were currently under slavery and are looking at Jesus saying, we're free. Because it can be so easy to not want to admit that maybe we need help. But it's not until I look back at God and go, there's a Jacob in me. There's a, I got some issues, God, that I need you to deal with. I, I got to bring not just the best of me, but the worst of me to you. It's, it's there that God goes, oh, I can do something with this person. How do I surrender to God? Lastly, I got to hold on to God. I got to hold on to God. So God says, Jacob, what's, what's your name? And then Jacob responds, well, what, what's your name? I told you my name, what's your name? I, I love this text because God shows up to Jacob. God finds Jacob. God wrestles with Jacob. God picks a fight with Jacob. And then like pretty much immediately, God tries to end the fight. And he's like, I'm out, I'm, I'm done, I'm done. Let me go. And I've always wondered, well, God, why'd you do that? Why'd you, why'd, you throw, why'd you pick a fight with Jacob and then try to stop it right away? And I think I realized something. I realized that God was testing Jacob. God was telling Jacob, go ahead, let go. Go ahead and run. Run from me like you ran from Isaac and run from me like you ran from Rebecca and run from me like you ran from your house and run from me like you ran 
from Esau and run from me like you've run from Laban and run from me like you've run from your own family and run from me like you've run from your own. Go ahead and run. Go ahead and do what you've always done. If that's what you want, that's what you can have. And Jacob had a choice. Am I gonna run or am I gonna wrestle? Listen to me, church. You can run or you can wrestle, but you can't do both. And you gotta make a decision. Am I gonna, uh, let me just tell you something. The life you want, you will not get by running away from God and from yourself. The life you want, you're gonna have to wrestle. This church is not built on pastors that have just run from conflict. It's, it's been built by pastors who have decided we're going to wrestle. We're going to wrestle with God and we're going to wrestle with our own issues and we're going to stick it out. I'm telling you, everything you want is on the other side of a wrestling match with God. Everything that's in your heart to do is on the other side of holding on to God. Everything that the devil has for you is on the other side of you running away from your issues, running away from your family, running away from the thing that God's trying to do in your life, running away from the house, running away from God. But if you will wrestle with God. And if you will wrestle with man, there is victory. There is an overcoming spirit that you get to pass down to the next generation. There is a legacy that you get to give away. Everything changes if you wrestle. Everyone will need to wrestle. Everyone will need to get to the point where you want to quit and then you don't quit. And in that moment, you become an overcomer and you get stronger. Recently, I'll have the, I'll have the team come up. Recently, uh, I, I tried to quit. I tried to quit. I'm just going to be honest. No, I, for real, I tried to quit. I was like three months ago. I walked downstairs, Pastor Taylor. I walked downstairs and I looked at my wife and we just kind of stared at each other. She knew I was in a bad mood. And then I just turned, I went to the freezer and I got a half gallon of Bluebell, a half gallon. <laughs> Listen to me, not a pint a half gallon of Bluebell. Pastor Robert doesn't eat Bluebell anymore. I have to eat his share. Amen. I got to balance him out. Praise the Lord. So I got a half gallon of Bluebell and I looked at her and I said, I quit. I'm out. So if you want to be the pastor, you can be the pastor. If you want to call the Medus and make this social Vegas, we could do that. But I'm out. I'm out. I'm, I'm too tired. The building, the this, the that, the, the staff, the this, the that. The, 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 I'm done. I'm out. And I grabbed my bluebell and I started walking up the stairs. I said, I love you. We're going to be together, but you know, we're going to do something different. And I got up about four or five steps and my wife, she says five foot, but we, she's 4'11", okay? 4'11", little Latina. I just hear, no! With my bluebell protect. It's okay, mija, it's okay. I love you, I love you, we'll see you. I said, what? She said, no. I said, what do you mean? She goes, you're not quitting. We're going to make it. And I went, okay. And I walked upstairs in my blue belt. And I ate my blue belt and I woke up the next morning. I said, well, we ain't quitting. Because that's life. Life is sometimes you want to run, but you wrestle. Life is sometimes you want to leave, but you stay. Life is sometimes you want to give into that temptation, but you stand with God and you say, God, I'm going to hold on to you in the midst of the pressure. The devil's trying to take me out, but God's trying to heal my life. Oh, come on, somebody say amen in the house. And Jacob calls the place Benaiah. Benaiah, Benaiah. Benaiah means face to face. See, Jacob saw God, Genesis 28, Jacob saw God in Bethel. He felt God. He experienced God. He, he knew he was in the presence of God in Bethel. So much so that he goes, surely the Lord, the Lord must be here. I didn't even know it. I, I'm going to call this place Bethel. See, Jacob knew God corporately. Some of you love Robert's God. Some of you love social Dallas's God. Some of you love 
God corporately. But the change doesn't happen till you know him personally. And he goes, I knew God in his house, but now I know God face to face. I, I call this place Peniel. I, I actually, I don't just know about God. I know God. I, I've experienced God. I've, I've seen God face to face and he let me live. I, Peniel. I, And now that he meets God, he does the one thing that every person in this room must do. He says, God, I told you my name. But who are you? What's your name? I know you're Abraham's God and I know you're my daddy's God, but God, who are you to me? I know you're Robert's God and I know you've been faithful to Taylor, but who are you to me? And I, I know you've made a way for the preacher and I know you made a way for my grandparents and I know you made a way for my mama, but God, who are you to me? God, who are you? And every person has to ask this question. Moses asked it in Exodus 3. David asked it in Psalm 18. The disciples had to answer this question in Matthew 8. Peter needed to answer this in Matthew 16. Paul would ask this in Acts chapter 9. God, who are you? And God reveals who he is not by giving him a name, but by showing him what he can do. He didn't say, I'm, I'm Jehovah. He didn't say, I'm the great I am. He did not say, I'm Yahweh. He didn't say, I'm Jehovah Nisi or Jehovah Shah. He didn't say any of that. He goes, I bless you. I'm not like Rebecca. I don't curse my babies. I, I'm not like that weak Isaac that let it happen to you. I bless you. I'm not like Laban who does not think he has enough. I bless you. I'm not like Esau who wants to wipe you out. I bless you. I'm not like your daddy that left you. I'm not like that teacher that abused you. I'm not like that ex that walked out on you. I am a God of blessing. I will do for you what Rebecca could not do. I will do for you what Isaac refused to do. I will do for you what no man can do. I'm the God of more than enough. I'm the God who can release blessing on your life because maybe what you need is not Isaac's blessing. Maybe what you need is not Rebecca's cuddle. Maybe what you need is not what God gave to Esau. Maybe you need a word from God for yourself. Somebody shout if you're hearing this preacher right now. Jacob needed God and we need God. See, Jacob, listen to me, man of God. Jacob had a God problem. Maybe you don't have a lust problem. Maybe you don't have a woman problem. Maybe you don't have an anger problem. Maybe you don't have a pride problem, sir. Maybe you've got a God problem. Maybe you have not dealt with the God issue in your soul. Maybe you are chasing the approval of all these other things because you have not heard from a heavenly father that can bless your life. Jacob was craving the blessing of God, not of Isaac. Jacob needed the word of God, not of Rebekah. And God blessed him by changing his name. You are no longer Jacob. You're Israel. Because, because you struggled. Because you wrestled. Because you held on when you wanted to let go. See, the blessing is a word from God. The blessing is not a card. The blessing is not a watch. The blessing is not a house. The, the blessing is not even this. As much as I'm blessed to be here and honored to be here, the blessing of God is that He told me I'm His Son. 
Because if I don't get it from God, I'll try to get it from you. Did I preach okay? Did I do okay? Some people in the back aren't standing yet. I don't know if I'm really doing a good job. I don't, no, 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 no. I I love you, but I don't need you. Because I got a word from my heavenly father that said, you're no longer Jacob. There's an Israel in you. There's an overcomer in you. There's a chain breaker in you. There's a generational curse breaker in you. And I didn't even know who I was till I met God. You're no longer your past. You're no longer your mistakes. You're no longer what Rebecca told you and what the demons told you and what the devil told you. You are no longer your worst season. You are no longer your shame. Israel, you are who God says you are. And in the name of Jesus, I declare over every person, come on, everybody standing right now, I declare in Jesus' name, you are loved, you are healed, you are a child of God, you are saved, you are redeemed from the curse, you are holy, forgiven, free, well supplied, protected, promised. You are no longer Jacob, you are Israel. I'm not my worst moment and I'm not Rebecca's worst moment. I am who he says I am. Jacob gets blessed. Watch this, watch this. He starts the story running. Then we find him wrestling, but watch this. By the end, we find him limping. Ooh. I ain't talking about swag, y'all. I'm not talking about drip. I'm not talking about riz. I'm talking about, ow. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost hurt me. He stepped on my toes. He convicted me. He he told me to repent. He told me to change. Ow. I, I don't trust anyone who doesn't have a limp. <laughs> I wouldn't date anybody who doesn't have a limp. I would not say I do to, I'm gonna change him. I wouldn't say yes to any man who doesn't, I wouldn't go to a church where the pastor doesn't have a limp. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do business with anybody that doesn't have a limp, but if, woo, God's been working on me. Oh, but it doesn't, it doesn't end at limping. It doesn't end at limping. It ends in Hebrews 11. The Bible said Jacob is leaning on his staff watch this worshiping he's leaning on his reminder that he saw God he's leaning on his reminder that he's Israel he's leaning on his reminder and now on his staff Hebrews 11 tells us he's worshiping. And then this is my favorite part. Watch this. And he starts, right before he dies, he starts blessing his sons. The man that was born stealing blessings dies giving blessings. The man that was convinced there would never be enough for him and Esau is now giving away blessing to an entire generation. The man who thought there would never be enough now knows that God is the God of more than enough. The man who was born in sin, born a taker, would die a giver. Because see, you're born looking like your parents, but you're gonna die looking like your decisions. And you get to die different than you were born. You get to live a different life than you were born into. Your family tree does not define the rest of your life. There is a God who can change you, who can save you, who can redeem you. And now your children look at you and they would have no idea where you came from. And they would go, alcoholism was in our family? Divorce was in our family? Hate and racism was in our family? 
poverty was in our fa- Are you for real? Yeah, yeah, because because you, baby, you don't know Jacob. You got to meet me in my Israel flow. You got to meet me. Uh, yeah, see that limp? That's the Holy Ghost. God, God, God filled me with the Holy Ghost. God changed our last name. God changed us forever. And now you get to live in the blessing of my wrestling match. Now my children get to live in the blessing of me not running away. Now my next generation gets to live in the blessing of me holding on to God. That can be your story, Jacob. A lot of people know me now as this real generous person that's like become a thing. And it's so funny because it's like, oh, if you only knew Jacob, if you only saw the trailer park I was born in, if you only saw the, if you only saw the meth lab that blew up our next door neighbor, if you only saw that, if you only knew where I see you judging this now, you, you have no idea. You, you have no clue. There was a Jacob, there was, there was not enough, there was poverty, there was addiction, there was, oh, there was small, small, small thinking. There was insecurities and wounds and father wounds and mama wounds. And, oh, and then, but, but, but now you, you, you see me on the other side. Because see, sometimes you can watch a preacher and go, well, that's easy for you to say. Yeah, but you, but you didn't get to watch the wrestling match. We'll watch it in heaven. I'll, I'll show it to you in heaven. I'll show you where God touched my hip. I'll show you where God broke me. I'll show you the the moments I wanted to run, but I stayed. I'll show you the times I had to pray through. I'll show you the times that that we emptied the bank account. I'll show you all that in heaven. But for right now, you just got to know that that God can do something radical in your life if you will hold. That's how you surrender. Every day, I hold on to God until I don't recognize myself anymore. Do you lift your hands all over this room? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I bless you. Everything you thought you needed from man God's going to give it to you today. Oh, what a blessing to have the blessing of Isaac. Wow, that would have been amazing. Oh, what a blessing if I had the blessing of Rebecca. Man, I wish I did. But there is a blessing that comes from a heavenly father who says, this is my son, this is my daughter whom I love, whom I'm well pleased. Today I speak against a poverty spirit. I speak against an orphan spirit. I speak to the broken heart and I declare that the love of Jesus flows right now and heals you. I release you from the deception that it's all these other things. No, 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 today you wrestle with God. And today he wrestles with you and today he changes your name in the name of Jesus. You will never be the same. You will never be the same. You will never be this. I bless you. I bless you. He blesses you now. He loves you with an everlasting love. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Say this, say, Father, I receive your voice of blessing and approval. Heal my broken heart. Renew my mind. I turn to you. And I receive everything you have for me. Just keep your eyes closed, your head bowed for one moment. We're almost dismissed. Just close your eyes. If you're here today, you say, Jamin, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need 
Jesus. One, I've never given my life to Christ ever. I've never had a faith moment with God. Two, I actually used to walk with God, but I've walked away. I need to come home. If that's you in this moment, in this room, I'm giving my life to Christ or rededicating my life to Christ. If that's you, I want to pray with you. Online, people are praying. In the room, we're all going to pray together. Everybody out loud, we're going to pray this prayer because we're going to encourage all those who are giving their life to Christ. Say this with me. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again. Forgive me of my sins for the things I've done. Make me brand new. Jesus, be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my source of blessing. In Jesus' name. Every eye is still closed. Every head is still bowed. If that's you, I'm giving my life to Christ today. Or... I'm coming back to Christ. I'm returning back. I'm turning back. Like that prodigal son, I'm coming home. If that's you, front to the back, left to the right, I promise you, you will not raise your hand alone. Many, many, many in this room will raise their hand and say yes to Christ. I'm giving my life to Jesus, rededicating my life to Jesus. One, two, three. Shoot your hand up high. Shoot your hand up high. High, 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 high. All over the room. High, 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 high. All over the room. And just leave it up for a moment. I want to acknowledge you. I see you. I see you. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hundreds and hundreds of people saying yes to Jesus. God bless you. 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 Just keep your hand raised for a moment. I'm, I just want to bless you in Jesus' name. I see you. God's hand is on you. God's grace is on you. Father, you see every hand. I pray you seal this moment by pouring out your Holy Spirit in their hearts, letting them know they're a child of God and letting them know that they are loved by you in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus.